I want to keep it a buck, literally, I haven't stopped eating this you pizza, haven't. and I begged Nicole for this chili oil. <laughs> ah, oh my God, you really are a part of First Week East family. Brooklyn is hallowed ground when it comes to pizza. The dish may have been born in Naples, Italy, but to many, it was perfected right here in neighborhoods like Midwood, Gravesend, Park Slope, and Coney Island. Today, the borough is still home to some of the best pizzerias on the planet, ranging from family-owned institutions to new school slice shops balancing innovation with tradition. To better understand what makes Brooklyn pizza so special, I'm first meeting up with my good friend, Frank Pinello. Frank was born and raised in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and is the chef owner behind Williamsburg's Best Pizza. Today, Frank is taking me to one of his favorite old school slice shops, Luigi's in Park Slope, where second generation owner Giovanni Lanzo is keeping his family's legacy alive after 50 years of business. What do you guys think made this place last so long and still a staple in Brooklyn? I don't know if it's just like the facade outside, it reminds me of my childhood and the pizzerias I grew up going to. But then when you walk in here and you see Gio making the pies and you could just kind of feel that family feeling, like it's a true family restaurant. Yeah. I think um, there's really not many places left. I feel like in New York, things, uh, things come and they go so quickly, but the really special places last the test of time. And, this is certainly one of them. Gio, when I think of a classic New York pizzeria, I think of this place. Can you tell me how your parents came to open this pizzeria in the 1970s? They had a dream when they came here. Uh -huh. They both worked. My father worked in a cemetery eight to five. From five to four in the morning, he worked in a pizzeria. My mother worked in a sweatshop. They put everything together because they never spent anything. They made everything at home because everything is bad outside. Don't eat it, it's no good for you. Old school. Old school, yeah, and they saved it. My father bought the building, and it took him six months. He opened up the pizzeria. So at what point did you say to yourself, I want to you know, pick up what my parents did and just continue the dream? Well, I'm the typical kid that grows up in a family where the father has a business that thinks he's smarter than the father. Mm -hmm. I went to college. My father went to the second grade. Here I am. I thought I was smarter than my father. I really wasn't. After I got out of college, I went to work for a company. I lasted not even a year because I came right back here. Wow. I couldn't handle being behind a desk. Right. And I wanted to make pizza. I realized that I love making pizza. My father called me a donkey my whole life. <laughs> and that. Stu Chuch, all this money I spend on school, and he wants to make pizza. Stu Stu Chuch, Stu Sham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make a Brooklyn, South Brooklyn pizza. Well, I have to tell you, it's just an honor to be back here. Press on the outside, not the middle. The outside, oh, so even the crust. Even the crust. Oh, the crust okay. will show up no matter what. What happens is when you start stretching it to 18, 19 inches, uh -huh. this part has to be... Have right. you see people have weak middles? Right. And people say, oh, that pizza flops? Yeah. Well, leave the middle to it. Leave the middle. It, st it stretches as you make it bigger. So for years, I was always scared to touch my crust. The Italians told you that one, right? Yes. Don't touch Italians the crust. Me everything. God Let's forbid be... you're in Napoli and you touch the, yeah. the crust. Yeah. Holy shit. Am I doing it right? Yeah, that's it. And yeah. as you do it, you're actually turning it. Flip it over. Flip it over. That's it. Ah. Just go like this. Pick ah. Okay, that's I'm it, that's, that, but that's it. The dough screens we both run. But okay. <laughs> right? Ah, right? So funny. right? Ready? Go. Yep. Ooh. And then put it on the board. Okay. I got it open, so I'm just happy that I got it open. How far out do you usually go? To the crust. All the way. My father used to hate it. Where's the like cheese that? on the crust? My father used to make sure to crust that cheese. How much cheese do you put? Are you a cheesy guy? No. Okay. No. no. Not too much cheese. Not just too much sauce cheese. and bread. Just sauce and bread, okay. Yep. I could live on that. If you put me in jail, just give me sauce and bread, okay. and I'll be happier than anywhere else. My name is Lisa Lanzo. And I'm Marisa Lanzo. We are Giovanni's, Giovanni's sisters, sisters, and we are the owners of Luigi's Pizza. We have a lot of pride being here. My parents worked their butts off. So my mother worked here, she worked at home. She was definitely like the steel behind my father. She was also, she was, the heart that kept everything going. Are you proud of your brother? Oh, extremely. Honestly, the hours that he puts in. He gets so busy and so bombarded with orders and he takes two minutes for himself. Just two minutes to sit down, give himself a breather, and then he's back out there making sure everybody is fed, making sure everybody is happy, 
and we're just proud of him. That's why his customers love him. Luigi's Pizza is the best pizza in Brooklyn, in New York. You know what? I've had Italian pizza. Sorry. Brooklyn is where it's at, and Luigi's is number one, <laughs> as far as we're concerned. God, Ooh, so thin good. and crispy. I've been dying to try this pizza. I cannot wait. Salud. 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 Oh, my God. Mm. Oh. So mm. delicious. To me, it's very much a prototypical New York slice, except on, on like the highest level. It's got like a, a nice weight to it, you know, so it doesn't feel flimsy or too thin. And when you take a bite of it, you taste everything. You taste the acidity from the sauce, the creaminess from the cheese, and then that delicious crust underneath. Mm. Really delicious. So good. I love what I do. Right. So every bit of love goes into it, so. Yeah. The, I, I, well, I can taste the love. So good. Brooklyn is still old school, but there's also a new guard of Brooklyn bred pizza chefs who are continuing to serve up some of the best slices in the country. In Sheep's Head Bay, Chef Sal Carlino is bridging the old world with the new with its critically acclaimed slice shop, Lucia. Like Gio, Sal has Brooklyn pizza in his blood. His parents' restaurant, Papa Leone's, operated in Sheep's Head Bay for more than four decades. He opened Lucia to shake up the South Brooklyn slice scene and add his own twist to his family's recipes. You know, I love a neighborhood shop, especially one like this that's so nostalgic. But most importantly, I love that you opened it up right here in the neighborhood in Sheep's Head Bay. Thank you so much. Why Sheep's Head Bay? The story starts here. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts in 1974. At Papaleone's was my mom and dad's spot. I grew up there, grew up working for them my whole life. My biggest fear was that Sheepshead Bay was undercovered, right? That we're a part of South Brooklyn that doesn't really get the attention from any sort of food media, period, with the exception of like three places, and a lot of them are part of this old guard that just always existed. Some of them 50, 60 years old, some of them 100 years old. And at first, I was gonna run away from it because I was terrified. I was scared. What were you scared of? Were you scared that people wouldn't come? Like, exactly. They wanted to troop all the way to Sheep's Head Bay? 100%. I feel like what you did was a great idea because the trends are changing. You right. know what I mean? Like, I feel like more people are willing to troop anywhere as long as the pizza is fantastic and you know right. you don't have that problem. Right. If you've told me that you've been living in the borough for five or 10 years, but you've never gone to Coney Island, right. or you've never seen Brighton Beach, and you've not experienced these beautiful parts of the borough that exist outside of what is considered popular Brooklyn now, you're just cheating yourself out of a really fun day. Do you think your parents are like super proud of you for what you've done? It's a lot of pressure, right? <sighs> I think, yeah. I think for the first time, probably in a, in a handful of oh, years really? they are, yeah. I got an old school Sicilian dad. We'll talk for like 30 seconds and he cries at the drop of a hat oh, now and I stuff, you know. That. It's special, it means a lot to me. All right, Nicole, we're gonna make a vodka pie. We use a local fresh mozzarella from uh, Leone. Oh, I love Leone, it's I mean, my who, favorite. who doesn't? Actually, Leone you know? is so classic Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, my Leone, goodness. Leone Latticini. Yes. I like a cold vodka sauce. It's the same as like having, you know, having a family member's red sauce the following day, it's always better. One of the things that people loved that mom and dad did was the vodka sauce. One of the main jobs of coming back to Sheepshead was getting the vodka sauce as close to what they used to make as possible. So now we're gonna make the uh, caramella picante, which okay. means, in Italian, it means basically spicy candy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're gonna go with a regular pie base. So now we're gonna go in with the cherry peppers. Right. Now we got the good cup and char pepperonis. Yeah, pepperoni. we got the good cup and char pepperonis. I Love like to put that. them on top for obvious reasons. Of course. The closer they are to the heat, the more likely they are to be a beautiful cup and char. So now we're gonna do the clam pie. So our clams are beautiful, fresh, chopped cherry stones. They're simmered and reduced into a white wine butter reduction. Ooh. And those are thinly sliced pieces of garlic? Yeah. As Frank would say, oh my, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop. So playing. this vodka pie is ready. Woo, look right. at that. I'll join you. It's so crispy and beautiful. Look at that. Uh, I'll meet it. I'll meet it right where it's at. Uh, so delicate. Thank it's you. so delicate. Oh my gosh, it's so good. All right. Mmm, delicious. This is the caramella picante. Mmm, it's gonna be pretty hard to top the vodka slice. Yeah, this is different though. This it's is fun. It's so good. To the good life. Cheers. Thank, Thank you, you. Joe, so much. Mmm, you know, I just love a good pepperoni, and the cherry peppers are nice. Not too much heat, the basil. Sheepshead Bay is so lucky to have you. 
Look at that. Plant pie. Ooh, yeah. some nice yeah, lemon. Some, Ooh, some lemon. I'm squeezing all of it on there. All right. Mmm. That clam is delicious. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is my favorite right here. Thank you so delicious. much. Delicious. Thank you. If South Brooklyn is all about history and tradition, then North Brooklyn has become synonymous with what's next. Few neighborhoods in New York City have more top-tier pizzerias per capita than Williamsburg. But still, one slice shop stands out from the rest. Linda Street has quickly become one of the most talked about pizzerias in the five boroughs, blending Brooklyn slice culture with Italian technique. So today, I'm sharing a pie with native Brooklynite and food TV icon, Adam Richmond, to see if Linda Street really lives up to the hype. I'm Nick Baglivo, and I'm one of the co-owners of Linda Street Pizzeria. Street gangster. <laughs> 365. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Massimo Laveglia. I'm one of the co-owners of L'Industria Pizzeria. I think it's a, it's a combination between like Italian style and New York style. Massimo's Italian artisanal ways about thinking about the dough and the quality behind the dough and like my New York style of thinking about slices being simple and classic. Our dough is like 48-hour fermentation. We don't mess behind the sauce. We use Bianco di Napoli mixed with Sassone. They're both California-based organic tomatoes with a low moisture of grande mozzarella cheese. That's classic New York style. So we're baking our pie uh, 330 Celsius, which is, uh, I think it's 680. I would say it's a little bit more high than the usual New York style pizza. The goal when the pizza comes out is to be crunchy, but also have a good chew to it. It has to be in between. I like when the pizza, when you fold it, and it makes that crack on the bottom. The burrata is the most popular, definitely. We sell like crazy amount of burrata every week here. I feel like the combination of like hot pizza and cold burrata on top when it come out, like is a nice balance. It's a real merge of styles because you take the burrata off, you have a regular slice. Put the burrata on, it's Italian. As much as you can come in and get a burrata slice, you can get soft serve, you can get a milafoya, you can get a donut, you can get an olive oil cake. I think what makes the pizza great here is the fact that we're always here. Our team is strong. Blur his face out, like Jerry Springer, you know, because they're gonna start poaching him. <laughs> this is Massimo Jr., you know? <laughs> this is the secret behind these the industry are, pizza. All yeah. these are the secret, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is the backbone. If there was a backbone emoji, it'd be these three guys. Oh my God, now, now Manny's gonna get upset in the back. Yes. Manny, come here. Yes. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry, hey, it means this is the you guys. Pizza. This is, this is the one I've heard so much this about. Is so Thank delicious. You. Enjoy Amazing. it. Amazing. Fresh this, is like said, this is what we're known for here at Linden Street, the regular pie. Mm -hmm. Put our twist it, we put burrata on top. So you get a really hot pizza with cool burrata on top. Mm -hmm. You can always eat it when it's fresh. All Enjoy right. the pizza, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Chef. I gotta put a little chili oil on mine. Oh, I'm gonna go naked. I wanna see this one. This is a game called mm. eating a pizza to get to the burrata. Oh, yes. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Chef. Cheers to you. Mm. If you look at it from the side, and this is something that Chris Bianco taught me, you can actually see that fermentation. To me, pizza is not just about the toppings. Yeah. You're eating the plate. You're eating the serving vessel. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I, can I tell you my favorite thing about this? A, the cold burrata on the hot pizza, amazing. Mm -hmm. The fresh basil hits the heat and then starts becoming perfumey. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a triumph of contrast. The creamy with the crunchy, the smoky with the sweet, it's its great. Well, you know, the thing that I love about it that makes it so Brooklyn to me is the slight flex. There's a flex with Linda Street. There's a flex in the slice, you know what I mean? I mean because they're saying it's fast. You're gonna get a pizza fast, but it's still sexy. It's still light and crispy. It's still high ingredients. It's still authentic. Clearly, you have like two real culinarians you know, in residence here and a great staff. Mm -hmm. And they're making that kind of bougie fork and knife pizza right. for the folks like me that just miss a good slice joint. As a native Brooklynite, how yeah. have you seen the pizza scene change over the years? It's a great question. To be honest, Williamsburg is not the Brooklyn I grew up in. I tell yes. people like, there was like the Brooklyn with like Ebbets Field and yeah. trolley dodging. Mm -hmm. Then there's the one of the ironic mustaches, trucker hats and Interpol. Yes. I grew up in that middle period where didn't know I want anything to fucking exactly. do with Brooklyn. And usually it was a place called Geno's, a place called Ponies, a place called Mama's, a painting of the Coliseum done by their like their cousin. <laughs> you know, my cousin Gino, he go with the paints. You know, the thing is, it was the nostalgia. And now I think in Williamsburg, when you have a stylish populace, fine dining, Michelin star restaurants. You're finding some of the old school slice shops mm -hmm. 
trying to up their game to catch up to places like Lindustry because more places are bringing elevated pizza to the masses and the places that were the old school slice shops, they have had to adapt and change or they are getting wiped out. Brooklyn does not have a monopoly on New York pizza. Staten Island, Manhattan, the Bronx, and Queens are all home to some incredible slices. But to me, Brooklyn remains the epicenter. So do you guys feel like Brooklyn is still the pizza capital of the world? Like what makes Brooklyn so special? You know, for a while, you saw a big change in Manhattan when it came to pizza. It was all the dollar slices. True. Right? But in Brooklyn, especially when you come to neighborhoods like this, there's a lot of history and a lot of pizzerias that have been around for a long time that are carry on legacy, where the bottom line isn't the most important thing. Maybe mm -hmm. in Manhattan it is, mm -hmm. but in Brooklyn, it's more about community, it's more about family, and it's more about, I think, the commitment to being great. I had a guy ask me the other day, he says, you know, you're well off, right? You gotta be all these years here. Why would you come to work every day? Because I'm not working. I love being here. This is mm -hmm. my socialization. What's the best part of your life? Was when you sit at the dinner table with your family. This is my family. Yes. 